In today's lecture, let's see the part 1 of IPv4 addresses. We will start the session with the outcomes. In today's session, we have three outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number 1, we will understand the IPv4 address in detail. Outcome number 2, we will see the notations of IPv4 address. And the last outcome, we will know the valid and invalid IP addresses with the help of an activity. Let's start the session with what is IPv4 address. IPv4 address or simply IP address stands for Internet Protocol Address. Internet Protocol is a very important protocol in the network layer. We know network layer is the layer 3 in the OSI reference model. What are the things that will be there in the network layer? The network layer will create a packet. This packet will definitely have the source IP address and the destination IP address. So, any node in the network is identified with the help of MAC address and IP addresses. So, IP addresses are logical addresses that are dealt in the network layer. So, a packet will definitely contain the source IP address and the destination IP address. An IPv4 address is a 32-bit address that uniquely and universally defines the connection of a device. For example, a computer or a router to the internet. So, in the internet, any node is identified with the help of this IP address only. Suppose if I am requesting for a packet from google.com, so my node is identified with the help of IP address and MAC address and the application is identified with the help of port numbers. So from my device, it has to reach Google's computer. So throughout the network that is in the internet, it needs IP addresses. And what about the size? An IPv4 address is of 32 bits long. 32 bits means it is of 4 bytes. So, any IPv4 address is of 32 bits long. We also have another version of IP address which is IPv6 address which is of 128 bits long. We will be talking about IPv6 address in the coming lectures. And two devices on the internet can never have the same address at the same time. This is a very important point. So, two devices cannot have the same address at the same time. If it is a local area network, we will never assign the same IP address to two different devices. We know IP conflict will happen and communication will not happen. But we can't expect that in the internet. Say, I have a computer and that computer is connected with the internet and I am giving the IP address as 10.10.10.1. Can I expect nobody in the world should use 10.10.10.1 for their computers? I can't expect because everyone has their privilege to use their own private IP addresses. In the upcoming lectures, I will explain what are private IP addresses and what are public IP addresses. In the internet, we need uniqueness in terms of IP address. I can't expect everyone in the world to use unique IP addresses. But how it is handled? Say, I am requesting a Google page from my computer which is 10.10.10.1 and many people in the world may use the same IP address which is 10.10.10.1. If I request the Google page only, my computer is receiving that Google response. Nobody in the world is getting that. How this is handled? And that's the power of NAT technology, network address translation. This NAT converts the private IP addresses to public IP addresses, where these public IP addresses are unique throughout the world. And what about the address space of IPv4? The address space of IPv4 is 2 part 32. Why 2 part 32? Because an IP address is of 32 bits long. So 2 part 32 means we will get more than 4 billion IP addresses. We can have more than 4 billion IPv4 addresses, but in reality we have billions and billions of devices. Can we assign unique IP address that is unique IPv4 address to all the devices? How can we handle billions and billions of devices with just 4 billion IPv4 addresses? And the answer for this is also the NAT technology, which is network address translation. We will be seeing this network address translation in the coming lectures. We will see the notations of IP address. Basically, there are two prevalent notations to show an IP address. Number one, the binary notation and number two, the dotted decimal notation. And this is the example of binary notation. We have already seen that IPv4 addresses, they are of 32 bits long. So, we will have 32 bits in the IP address and we have 4 octets. And how many bytes? 4 bytes. This is byte 1, byte 2, byte 3 and byte 4. Each byte is of 8 bits. So, we can say there are 4 octets in an IP address. We can represent the IP address in the other format which is the dotted decimal notation. 
So where we have four decimal values which is separated by dots. So 117.149.29.2 is an example dotted decimal notation. So this is the binary representation and its equivalent dotted decimal representation. And what about the range of each octet? We know this is in the decimal. We will see it in binary. If all bits are 0, that is the starting of IPv4 address. And if all bits are 1, that's the ending of the IPv4 address. So any octet, if we take the notation of an IP address, which can be A dot B dot C dot D, this will have only 4 octets. This is A is an octet, B is an octet, C is an octet, and D is also an octet. So A, B, C, D all are octets and an IPv4 address will have exactly 4 octets. And the range is any octet will be greater than or equal to 0 and obviously it will be less than or equal to 255. Why it is 0? If all bits in an octet is 0 then in the decimal it will be 0. If all 8 bits are 1 in an octet then the maximum value is 255. So any octet will take the value between 0 and 255. So 0.0.0.0, .0 is the starting of the IPv4 address and all ones in binary which is 255.255.255.255 is the last IPv4 address. We have various classes of IP address and we have private IP addresses, public IP addresses, loopback addresses. We will be covering all these topics in the coming lectures. We will see the valid IP addresses. IP addresses shown are valid IP addresses. Why we are saying they are valid? Because they have exactly 4 octets and the values in all the octets is between 0 and 255. So this contains private IP addresses and public IP addresses. I am not going to touch about the private and public IP addresses in this lecture. For time being we will know valid IP addresses means it should have only 4 octets and in every octet the value should be between 0 and 255. We will see some invalid IP addresses. So these are invalid IP addresses. Why? The first example it seems like a valid IP address because every octet is between 0 and 255. But when we look keenly we can see there are 5 octets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A valid IPv4 address will have only 4 octets. In the second example we have only 4 octets. 1, 2, 3 and 4. And the values are also between 0 and 255 in every octet. But still it is invalid. Why? Because this 65 is prefixed with 0. So prefix 0 is not permitted in IPv4 address. So the valid IP address will be 10.65.34.56 and not as 065. And the last example seems to be valid. But when we look at the third octet which is 256, a valid IPv4 address will be between 0 and 255 in every octet where 256 is bigger than 255. So we can't get 256 with the help of 8 bits, right? And that's why they are invalid. Now there is an interesting activity for you. This activity will help us to find out valid and invalid IP addresses. And more precisely, we will be able to find out the invalid IP addresses with a reason. The activity is, spot the error if any in the following IPv4 addresses. And the IPv4 addresses are given and we will spot the error. Pause this video for a while and think of the answer. I hope you are done. Let's check the answer. In the first one, we can see there are only 4 octets, but there is a prefix 0. So the answer is there must be no leading zeros. 045 is not permitted, simply 45 is accepted. And what about the second example? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 octets, any IPv4 address will have only 4 octets. And what about the third example? 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 octets, but we can notice the third octet is bigger than 255. Every octet in an IPv4 address must be between 0 and 255. So this is invalid because the range of each octet is between 0 and 255. And the last one is a combination of binary and decimal. So a mixture of binary and dotted decimal notation is not allowed. I hope you enjoyed this activity. We understood the IPv4 addresses. We saw the notations of IPv4 address. Number 1, the binary notation and number 2, the dotted decimal notation. And we also come to know the valid and invalid IP addresses with the help of an activity. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.